In this last example, we're going to create a herringbone pattern. It's different from the chevron pattern we just looked at, because now not only do individual rows overlap, but segments within the rows overlap on the left and right hand side, and one of the planks sits a little lower than the other. In order to achieve that, we're going to have to change the padding, but also the translation to move the second plank down. Let's get started. Pick the rail clone object, open the style editor. Once again, some of the work's been done here already. Uh, we've got the material, operator, a spline already in the scene with this spline selected, and the array. But none of the settings have been changed. So we need to combine these two together into one unit. Uh, I could use a sequence um, operator, but I'm going to use compose in this case. And I'm going to attach plank 1 and plank 2 to the compose operator in that order. And then connect the compose to this material operator here. So as you can see, we've got something like the chevron pattern, but because the um, ends weren't cut off at 45 degrees, they're touching tip to tip, top and bottom. Uh, in a herringbone pattern, this slides down to align with this top edge. So we need to do that here. And um, the way to do that is to come into plank 2, come into your transform settings, and to move it down, I'm just going to use the Y translation parameter, and just use minus 0.072. So that'll pull it down so that the corner here and the corner here line up. Next we need to close up these gaps between the two planks. The gap is actually identical between them so we just need to use the same value in both planks uh, in the right padding parameter to close that up. And that value is negative 0.068. If we just type that into both planks I've got the negative then they'll close up. Now in order to bring them down, um, it's exactly the same as the chevron style, so we'll just come into the top parameter and you'll need to do the same thing for both. That's zero, negative 0 0.355 and the same for plank 1, it won't change unless you put them both in. Closes up and creates a herringbone pattern. So a couple of things, we just need to change the transform. Again, um, if you want a slightly uneven surface, so we'll just turn the translation on, I've already got the settings in there. Same for both of them. And finally, again, because this has got diagonal elements, it's going to leave a gap at the uh, bottom and the top of the style. So just come into the array generator, to the clipping area parameters, and change the expand property until that disappears. Somewhere about there looks good. And that's another style that you could save to your library and can be easily reused. You can close that now, simply reassign it, by picking the spline here, and we can render that to see how it looks. In this tutorial, we covered many of the core techniques necessary to create popular parquet patterns. Similar techniques will work with a huge range of possible styles and could be used equally well for tiles, paving, ceilings, and much more. For more information about RailClone's new features, please see our reference section or visit the tutorials page for more videos.